Well, uh, one of the days that I have been dreading my entire life has finally happened. Um, this day, uh, this video, I'm not going to edit. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going to leave it just the way it is, exactly how it's coming out of my mind. 10 minutes after I heard the news. So basically, this morning, I dropped, I got up. <coughs> I went to go get, I went to go drop off my car after they came back to the mechanic and to get an inspection sticker. Uh, I walked in the door after I dropped a load of laundry in the washing machine and my phone rang and I saw on the caller ID that it was my father's ex-girlfriend. Uh, the first thing when I picked up the phone is I says, hi, she goes, I'm sorry to call you. I says, let me guess, my father died. And she said, yes, I'm sorry. I says, yeah, I've been expecting that phone call for a little while now. Uh, my father pretty much uh, died with his liver completely like destroyed. Uh, he was all swollen. I was very close with my dad. I mean, not as close as I wish I was. My plan was my, for my dad to come live closer to me. You know, I was going to buy a house with multiple apartments and he was going to live in one of them and he would always be within, you know, hugging distance. And uh, yeah, because I, I was always the type of person that I don't have a, a shame of showing affection even when I was in high school and middle school. You know, if they dropped me off or something, I always gave them a hug before I left. So. I never was uh, ashamed of any of that so for me it's like whenever I went to see my dad I, I would always just hug him you know like I'd always hug him hard because my dad is like a, a serious massive alcoholic uh, and he can't stop drinking and because because of that it completely ruined his liver and like his entire insides the doctors told him that you know he's gonna have to stop because he's not gonna make it much longer well he got diagnosed in October we just cracked into April so basically he had six months to live and he probably didn't tell nobody uh, so what my dad did is that he didn't listen of course uh, he was very old-fashioned so he was very stubborn the alcoholism that he's been you know indulging in since he was you know younger it was a little less frowned upon like it is now I mean, now, like, they always try to help everybody with alcoholism. They see alcohol as a disease rather than a really bad choice of addiction. So things are viewed a little differently. I mean, people abuse alcohol nowadays more than ever before. Studies have proven that, that alcoholism is on the rise. Um, and when the COVID happened two years ago, it just went through the roof. I've had a lot of problems uh, in my life with multiple lovers because... I wasn't the kind of person to kind of like fall into the crowd and go drinking with them so I was always like that embarrassed, the embarrassing person that nobody wanted to associate with. So it, I've always stayed away from alcoholism. So because of that, it's because I've seen what it does to families. I've seen what it does to people, how it changes them and people can do whatever they want and it's a shame that I, I lost my my. My friend, my dad, uh, the last parent that I have that I love, and and all I can say is that I, I wish, I wish I had another day with him. Uh, do do I wish I knew that this was gonna happen? Then have a day with him? Definitely not. It's not the same when you say goodbye. You know, every time I left my dad's house, I would always look at him as I was driving because I always had a feeling that was gonna be the last time I was gonna see him because his alcoholism was at that point where it was just uncontrollable, you know? Every time, you know? Every time I went to see him, that's, that's how I always uh, saw no, him. He went to put, no, it was November. He went to Portugal right before Christmas, so it was like just like a week into December. So I saw him and he went like a week later. So I didn't see my dad at all since then because he hasn't been here. He came back for two weeks to, to, to do some sort of paperwork for his divorce the woman he was married to uh, then he went back so this whole time he left he didn't pay his phone bill so I had no way of contacting him he never gave me the number for his family where he was gonna be so I couldn't even call then say hi to him I didn't hear my dad's voice my dad didn't hear my voice my dad told me last time I saw him that he likes this conversation that we're having 
underneath the grapevines because all the Portuguese always have grapevines. So of course, my dad had to have one. So we're underneath the grapevine having a conversation, talking about life, talking about the new adventure of my life, my, my parenthood, and the career path that I want to take and, you know, the situations like that, you know, just basic things that you talk about with your dad. And he, he was so happy for me, you know. He was so proud of me, so proud. I just wish that he stopped when the doctor told him. You know, the doctor told him if if you don't if you don't stop, it's you're not going to make it much longer. Did the doctor tell him if you don't stop, you're not going to make it past six months? Did the doctor tell him anything like that? I don't know because my dad was was the kind of person he he lied a lot. <laughs> you know, he kind of like brushed everything off. You know, like he was never like he never wanted to deal with any of that stuff. The strange thing is, is today's like national beer day or whatever it is on national alcoholic day i don't know what the hell they call it but either way he ended up dying on exactly the he died the day the special day of what today is because of what it today is alcohol so basically he died of what he loved and I, I wish i had more time with him and we always wish we had more time and i told my dad last year i says you know pi says that's what we called him that's what you call your father when, in portuguese you know I says, you know, Pai, I don't want our lives to be like this forever, you know? I don't want our lives to be like this so far apart, you know? I says, I, I eventually want you to move here next to me. He didn't really say anything. And that's so weird because, like, when she told me he died, I knew he died when she called me. I had a feeling. That's why she called me. But when she finally said it, like my heart felt, like I, I felt my heart drop. My dad was like a mom to me too. You know, he was like my, my mother. I used to call him on Mother's Day <laughs> because he was my mom too. He was, he was a terrible father. There was some moments where he actually tried, <laughs> which is good, you know. But I know he loved us and I know he loved me. You know, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what what to feel. You know, like I was so close to my dad, but I wasn't close enough. You know, the way you're supposed to be with parents, I wasn't. And now that he's gone, I have all these things in my mind that I wish I did differently. And I knew in my mind that I wasn't the perfect son. I just wish I was a little bit better. And now my dad's gone, and I can't. I don't I I can't see him now because he's going to be buried in Portugal. They're going to cremate him. They can't send his ashes over. My dad's gone forever. At least if I had my dad's ashes, I could at least go see him. So he went to Portugal. He eventually went to rehab because they talked him into it cuz he got so bad that they they basically had to force him there and you know, he they told him they they released him, I guess. My phone my dad's uh ex-girlfriend told me they released him because he was so bad that they couldn't do anything for him he was already so far at the tipping point and eventually his body just gave out and he died you know I, I'm very surprised that I'm not crying I mean I can feel I can feel like the pain inside and how much I miss him but I'm surprised that I'm not like falling apart is what I'm saying like because I I love my dad like so much. I've told people so many times, you know, if something like that happened to my dad, you guys wouldn't see me for a month. <laughs> I think it's because I've been prepared. Especially since I talked to him last. I kind of been prepared because I know he was been drinking a lot more than usual. You know, he was he used to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. And it's it's so weird. It's so weird how these things happen because I remember uh, a couple days ago, I was I was in here in my room here, I was doing some stuff some editing and I caught myself for a moment in silence you know like days before this happened for some reason I was doing something and I was started thinking about my dad like how I used to walk into the kitchen when I was little this is before my parents got divorced I was probably like 12 11 and my dad always had a habit of smoking in the house uh, before people were educated about how bad that is for you and he would always smoke in front of the kitchen window he would just lean to the side, lean on the counter, smoking a cigarette, looking outside, 
the kitchen window to the garden and I remember sitting with my dad underneath the grapevine when I was little and uh, he would be he would be there smoking drinking a beer and then I'd have my little bunny like in the cage there like my dad Hamadi used to get when I used to break into the garage when he was at work because the garage had the two garage doors and there used to be a little way to move it and I used to just jiggle it just enough to open it because my dad always had a lot of tools and I always liked to go in the garage and mess around with his tools but I have to tell you guys like it, it hurts it hurts a lot I really I'm telling you right now if if I didn't if I if I didn't talk to my dad a few months ago I I think I would have felt so guilty <laughs> and my dad says I hope this isn't the last time we have these this type of conversation together you know being serious and I says it doesn't have to be <laughs> it really doesn't because most of the time when I go over there he's drunk like he's completely just trashed he doesn't know what is going on he repeats himself all the time and he, he just he basically I'm there and he doesn't even he doesn't even like comprehend anything that I'm saying to him he's so far gone he's like slurring his words he's got one eye this way one eye that way I mean he's just completely wasted and my dad would would drink those nip things I don't even know if that's the way you say it but he used to drink those things just to help pro help uh, speed up the drunk process you know so that's what he used to do and uh, he was never like that when I was when I was little never he never did that stuff I don't know why all of a sudden he got into it so he'd be drinking he'd do the nips it just because it would it would it would accelerate the process of being drunk and that's the feeling he obviously wanted <clears throat> I don't even think he did it for taste because when you see people's faces when they do that stuff they just they look like they're about to die. I remember the first time my dad ever went out with me ever. My my dad never went anywhere with me alone ever, okay? One day we lived together. I was 16 years old or 15. My dad went to the mall with me and he went in this polyester blue suit these fancy shoes and smelling like cheap cologne to the mall with me and I still did the whole time with him no matter how ridiculous he looked I was there beside him because I looked ridiculous too so it's kind of crappy look the way I looked back then so I never forget it I never forget the day that I first saw my dad cry I was living with him um, in Taunton Massachusetts and I remember when I started living with him this is after I left foster care uh, my dad, he was like, he was so mad because the when I he he agreed to let me live with him, but the thing is, is that he the landlord, the person that was renting, he was renting from, increased the rent by a hundred dollars a month because now he's got me there. So my dad was so mad about the hundred dollars, and my dad was like very active, you know. My dad was a good worker, always working hard. You know, my dad did 70 plus hours a week when we were little to support us, you know. And I remember they, uh, eventually he, he just, he didn't keep up with the agreements from the foster care, social workers and things like that. You know, they used to come over my house uninvited all the time to just check on stuff. And uh, they checked the milk, it was expired, it was like practically cheese now. There was no food in the refrigerator. She would open the cabinets and of course she'd find a bottle of alcohol in there. Uh, my dad had beer in the fridge, you know, so I never forget that the first time I ever saw my dad cry and he was so sad when they pulled me away. They came to the house to get me on completely without anybody knowing. She came over there with two cops or two people, I don't remember, it was so long ago. And they took me away from him again. <laughs> And he was crying saying give me another chance you know my dad was already freshly divorced so he was just going crazy with women so all he cared about was being out every night picking up women and uh, I it, that 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 feeling that sound of his tears and his voice cracking up from it it was just it's something that's been in my mind for for forever but man my dad was so 
so devastated. Frisbee. My dad used to play frisbee with me. We never, I don't know why it was frisbee. I, I mean, most parents play baseball because I still think it's kind of strange. Frisbee out of all things, you know? We used to play frisbee a lot. I think he used to get those frisbees from his job. They used to brand it and then just give them out to people. They'd be like kind of like a cheap way of um, advertising. Uh, and then my dad used to always play frisbee with me when I was little. I was so good, man. We were like, the aim was perfect, the catching was perfect. And that's one thing that me and my dad always did was play frisbee. You know, my dad never built stuff with me. You know, my dad was like, he worked a lot, you know, so. Plus, I don't think he knew how to be like that. You know, he definitely got so much better as time went on. You know what I mean? He definitely got better, I have to say. And it wasn't financially, it was just he he grew up, he matured. He realized that running around with women is only going to be fun for a while. Eventually, you're going to want to lay down with somebody and be there with them for the rest of your life. And I knew it was going to happen. And I kept telling myself, don't worry, you got till he's 80 at least. He'll be fine till he's 80. He used to tell me all the time, your grandfather lived till he was 95. And he, he smoked every day and drank. So I was kind of hoping that was going to work out for him too. I'm going to have this pain in my heart for a long time. Basically, I, I, lost, I lost one of my friends. So... I just wanted to share that with you guys that you can't always be happy, you know, it's understandable. You can't be happy when it's out of your control. I never prepared for the after of this situation. I've always prepared for it, but never after. And I, I had scenarios that I was going to prepare for, you know, like I was always afraid he was going to go to Portugal and never come back. So I was preparing myself for that. And then I was always afraid that something was going to happen to him in Portugal and I'd never get to see him again. Now the pain is there, man. The pain is there. So I just wanted to say, please, hug your parents. Because you, you really don't know when it's going to take them. <laughs> you really don't know.